In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set up your Evidence for Learning cloud. It's quite straightforward, and all you need is a web browser. So first we need to open the console page. https colon forward slash forward slash console.evidenceforlearning.net and then log in using the credentials that you've been supplied with. OK, so this is the console. And before we get started, it's probably worth noticing the change password link in the top right. This is where you change the password for this account. And always remember to keep a strong password with a mixture of upper and lowercase letters, numbers and punctuation. So the first thing we need to do is create some learners in our cloud. So we click on learners and then we can click add on the right hand side and we'll just add John. We'll fill in some fields and when we're happy we'll click save. So we can continue to add individual learners using the add button. Or to add multiple learners at the same time we can use the import button. So this lets us import learners directly from an Excel spreadsheet and in this case we want to set up and import new learners. So we'll click to download the blank template. However, for future reference, if we want to update existing learners, then we should first use the export button to create the Excel file, which will include a column for the cloud ID. That's a unique reference for each learner, used when importing data to determine whether there's a match and whether to create a new record or update the existing record. We'll see more about that in a moment, but for now, let's work with the blank template. We can see here the column headings that we need in order to import our data. And I'll just paste in my data to these columns. And you'll see I've also populated the group name column on the right hand side. And you'll see in a moment, that's a great way of creating and populating some of our groups at the same time. So we'll save that Excel file and upload it to our learners. And then the next phase is to map the columns in the spreadsheet with the columns in the data. And for each column you can choose to ignore it or to allocate it to a particular field. As mentioned, the cloud ID is a unique identifier, like a serial number for each learner. And because we're importing these learners for the first time, they've not yet been allocated a cloud ID, so we can ignore that field for now. If you've used the template, it should automatically know which column maps to which field. And if you're populating your groups, you can also specify which column has the group names. And then which field to use as a unique identifier. This is important if you're updating existing learners. But for now, we don't need to worry about it, so let's click next. The third stage of this process is where we map the groups that we specified in the Excel file to any existing groups that are already in our system. In our case, we don't have any existing groups, so we can choose to ignore or create a new group. So I'm going to choose new for each of these and then tap process and there we are. Our learners have been imported with the data that we've provided and if we click on groups we can see the three groups have also been created and we can click to edit a group where we can rename it or add and remove learners. So for example to add Annie Smith we choose Annie and then click add and likewise select a learner to remove and then click remove. So that's our group setup. Now let's take a look at frameworks. Evidence for Learning can work with any framework. It's a blank canvas. In practice, you'd probably want to work with two types of framework. Personalized frameworks that adapt over time as the learner's needs change. These, for example, can be derived from an EHC plan or they can simply be a set of long-term, mid-term and or short-term learning targets created to scaffold a learner's progress. You can create these sets of personalised targets using the PLG module in the app. We'll cover this later on. But for now, let's take a look at frameworks that are intended to be used by multiple learners, such as key skills frameworks, subject specific curriculum frameworks, and or any accreditation units that you follow within your school or setting. So let's click import, and then there's two ways we can import a framework. We can use a file, or we can browse the library. So let's click open library. This is a really quick and easy way to add some common frameworks. Let's search for EYFS, then tap Import. And next, let's search for Roots for Learning, and again tap Import. 
Okay, so let's tap Frameworks again in the menu, and this will show the two new frameworks we've just added. And if you click Edit, you can see the structure of the framework. Okay, but many schools and networks of schools are presently developing their own curriculum and skills frameworks. So let's look at how we'd import one of those. So let's click the Import button again, and we'll choose a file. And this is a text file that I've already prepared. So let's take a quick look. When building frameworks to import into Evidence for Learning, there's a simple set of rules that you need to follow. But the first thing to point out is always use a text editor. Avoid using tools like Microsoft Word because they add special characters that can interfere with the import process. So the first rule is line number one should be the name of the framework. And then beneath that are the various headings and subheadings and framework items that we're going to be capturing evidence for. Each heading or item is on a new line and we prefix each heading or item with a hyphen to indicate that it's a subheading or section of the item above it. It gives the framework a hierarchical structure. So in this case we have a section called Grade 1 with various subsections A, B, C and D and so on each containing a set of framework items, targets or learning outcomes. And you'll also see we've added open and closed square brackets to the prefix for the framework items that we want to be able to link to when we're capturing evidence. And you can nest these subsections or sub-items up to four times deep. At this point, feel free to pause the video to take a closer look at the file structure. You can probably already see how your frameworks might be formatted in a way to be imported into Evidence for Learning. You'll also see that Evidence for Learning is in no way prescriptive in how you set up your frameworks. As mentioned earlier, you literally do have a blank canvas. And when building your own framework files, feel free to get in touch. We're here to help. So, let's upload this file. And there it is. And we can tap edit to view the framework we've just uploaded. So next, let's look at tags. You can attach tags to your evidence. Using them as key indicators or flags, they're really useful for searching and filtering your evidence to track progress and help inform pedagogy. For example, the most commonly used indicators that schools set tags for is levels of support. So let's add our levels of support. Click or tap the Add button and then add in your tag name and then tap Save. And I'll just quickly add in the other levels of support. Another commonly used indicator is where schools use engagement as an intervention tool. You can set up tags for each of your engagement indicators and in this case let's use the engagement profile developed by Professor Barry Carpenter and his team. And I'll just quickly add the rest of the engagement indicators. Some schools will also create tags for areas of curriculum or subjects. For example, literacy, writing, reading, spoken language and so on. But in this case, let's just add the send code of practice areas of need. You can also create tags for when certain resources are used, uh, perhaps Numicon and PEX. You can also create a tag for when a learner uses a new sign for the first time. We could have baseline assessment, learning walks, moderation, wow moments, anything you need. So we're beginning to build up quite a list of tags that we can tag each of our evidence with. So attaching these tags to your evidence, you can imagine with the filter tools in the app, whether it's for moderation, planning, work scrutiny and so on, you can fetch examples of evidence for individual learners or groups that demonstrate a level of support or engagement indicator or perhaps all the new signs for a particular learner this term. And of course you can cross-reference all this with the framework items that are being linked to the evidence too. It's a really powerful feature and if you'd like to learn more or if you need any help feel free to get in touch. Now let's look at comment templates. Comment templates are simply snippets of text that you can insert into the annotations for your evidence. A lot of schools use them to create consistency with annotations across the school, but also as a prompt to collect certain bits of information for your annotation. For example, they're a good way to help prompt teachers to structure their annotations, uh, to not just describe the activity, but to inform pedagogy and planning, i.e. intervention strategies and next steps. So let's create a comment template that helps us do that. There we go. Then tap save. 
And then lastly, for this video, let's um, create some date ranges. Date ranges are used to filter your evidence, whether you're fetching evidence to browse, or perhaps for one of your reports. In most cases, schools tend to add their semester or term dates. So for now, I'll just add a couple of those. In fact, I'll just edit these to add the year to the date range name. OK, and that's all our data set up. The next thing to do is to set up our devices. So take a look at the next video tutorial that will guide you through activating your device, pairing it with the cloud, and then downloading the system data. And don't forget, if you want to set up personalised learning intentions or EHC plan frameworks, take a look at the PLG video tutorials. If you have any questions about the setup process, please feel free to get in touch.